If you can accept that there are times that you are going to be uncomfortable and begin to think about how to make it easier for yourself during these times, then you can begin to have some control. And one of the ways to have control is to begin to understand how to change your perception of discomfort, the way you think about it. So let's look at some examples of this. There are alternative ways for you to experience discomfort and to think about it. There's a difference between the exact nature of reporting that you need to have when you go to a doctor and how you think about your discomfort privately. And you might already know that words used to think about uncomfortable body sensations can be so charged that the body tightens in response which causes more discomfort. We talked about this when we talked about fear and bracing. There are less charge words that will allow you to acknowledge the discomfort without triggering an emotional reaction. This isn't asking you to pretend that you're not uncomfortable when you are, but to find a way to be present with this discomfort and make it easier for yourself by not triggering fear, by not triggering a reaction. So it's very important for you to be able to experience discomfort if this is what your experience is. To be able to increase your tolerance of it, meaning decrease your reaction to it. So one of the ways to do this is what I'm doing right now. I'm talking about discomfort. Most people have a different reaction to pain than they do to discomfort. Pain feels like it's much more charged. There's also a possibility of orienting towards the comfortable, as in, I am less comfortable now. Instead of being uncomfortable, you're less comfortable. Or really being in the reality of things, really speaking the truth. I'm not as comfortable as I'd like to be, but I am okay. It's really important to notice that, that this isn't exactly what I want, but I'm still okay. And when you can acknowledge what's actually happening and also acknowledge that you're there being okay, not great, maybe not even good, but okay, then you begin to take control back. So here is this picture again and I have it here for you to experiment using the picture to see how you might translate this into thinking about your own body. So we see in the foreground there's these rocks and if you imagine laying down on these rocks or if you had to sleep here on these rocks, you can imagine that you would like them to be much smoother, much warmer, much more comfortable, even much less hard. But they're there, and they're rocks, and that's their nature, and that's what they're going to be like. So if you can recognize that, that can be really helpful. There's times in your life that may be rocky and you want it to be smoother but what is happening is it's rocky right now. And let's look at these peaks again. We can see them as beautiful. We can recognize that there's something romantic about snowy peaks, but it might not be so romantic if you right now were at the top of that snowy peak and it was cold and it was rough and it was harsh. That may be what you experience when you're on top of that snowy peak of discomfort. But then you get to pull back and you get to notice the whole picture again. And you get to take in all the elements, including the colors of the water, and to recognize that there are places of calm in your body when you, even when you're very uncomfortable, and there are places of beauty in your life, 
even when life is really difficult. So let's see how to translate this back into noticing discomfort. There are alternative ways for you to notice sensation in your body. What sensation? Anything is sensation. Something that feels good is a sensation. Something that feels not so good is a sensation. But this is to give you some more control. So people can sometimes describe pain or discomfort as throbbing. And throbbing can be charged. But maybe the word pulsing or pulsating may not feel as charged to you. And you might begin to find the rhythm in the throbbing. And notice the rhythm. And just like a drumstick hits a drum, and when the drumstick hits the drum on the downbeat there, there's a hit, there's a sound, but then when the drumstick comes up, there's quiet. If it's a very fast drummer, that may be really quick quiet, and what you mostly might hear is the drumming. See if you can find the rhythm and see if you can find the places in between. The same thing with the word sharp or the thought of sharp. Sharp can be perceived as less dull or even a tickle. Sometimes a tickle can be very intense, but most people have less of a charge to the word tickle than to the word sharp. Experiment. See what you can do with this. I'm going to encourage you to have creative mind, open mind, kind of like a child's mind, to see what you can discover. And here's some more ideas. Stabbing. A stabbing pain can become prickly. And if there's a way that you can pace the stabbing feeling so that it becomes a prickly feeling and you can pace it with your breathing by slowing your breathing down or focusing on your breathing, that will give you relief. The word constant can overwhelm people. So if you think of it as being intermittent, physical or emotional pain, find the comfortable spaces in between. Just like I talked about with the drumming, find the comfortable spaces. Find the comfortable place in your body. Burning. Typical MS symptom can be burning, but we tend to have less of a reaction to the word warm. So when you're thinking to yourself, you can notice the warmth. And I'm going to encourage you to find your own words and your own ways to have this be more comfortable.